immigrants. It sounds great, but it's never going to happen. Tell them why you're skeptical of his plans. Well, first off, Jake, I don't yield to anybody on how to enforce the law. I'm the only person on the stage who spent seven years as the United States attorney after September 11th. And I know how to do this. The fact is, though, that for 15,000 people a day to be deported every day for two years is an undertaking that almost none of us could accomplish given the current levels of funding and the current number of law enforcement officers. But here's what we need to do, and I think this is where Donald is absolutely right. What we need to do is to secure our border, and we need to do it with more than just a wall. We need to use electronics, we need to use drones, we need to use FBI, DA, and ATF, and yes, we need to take the fingerprint of every person who comes into this country on a visa, and mm -hmm. when they overstay their visa, we need to tap them on the shoulder and say, you have overstayed your welcome, you are taking advantage of the American people, it's time for you to go. If we had that kind of system in place, we wouldn't have the 11 million people we have now. Thank you, Governor Christie. Uh, By the way, I agree, with, I agree with what Chris is saying, uh, but I will say this, illegal immigration is costing us more than $200 billion a year just maintaining what we have. I, I want to bring in Dr. Carson because he too has been skeptical of your plan to immediately okay. deport 11 to 12 million uh, illegal immigrants. He said, quote, people who say that have no idea what this entails. Why do you say that, Dr. Carson? Well, first of all, recognize that we have an incredible illegal immigration problem. I was uh, down in Arizona a few weeks ago at the border. I mean, the fences that were there were not manned and those are the kind of fences when I was a kid that would barely slow us down. So I don't see any purpose in having that. Now what we need to do is look at something that actually works. Yuma County, Arizona, they stopped 97% of the illegal immigration through there. They put in a double fence with a road so that there was quick access by the enforcement people. Uh, if we don't seal the border, the rest of the stuff really doesn't matter. It's, it's kind of ridiculous, all the other things that we talk about. We have the ability to do it. We don't have the will to do it. There was one area where they had cut a hole in the fence, and to prepare it, they put a few strands of barbed wire across. Well, the photographers who were there with us, they wanted to ph photograph us from the side of the Mexicans, and they went through there, and they were not physically fit people, and they took their cameras and things with them and shot us from the other side. That's how easy it is to get across. And the drugs, I mean, it goes on and on and on. ICE tells them to release these people. 67,000 criminals released Dr. Carson, onto our property. It's ridiculous. With, with, all, with all due respect, Dr. Carson, you said about Donald Trump's plan to immediately deport 11 to 12 million undocumented immigrants. People who say that have no idea what this entails. Why not? Well, I have also said, if, if anybody knows how to do that, uh, that I would be willing to listen. And if they can, uh, you know, specify exactly how that's going to be done and what the costs, and it sounds reasonable, then I think uh, it's worth discussing. And, but and let's, Jake, let's continue Jake, the conversation about illegal immigration with Dana Bash. Governor Bush, Mr. Trump has suggested that your views on immigration are influenced by your Mexican-born wife. He said that, quote, if my wife were from Mexico, I think I would have a soft spot for people from Mexico. Did Mr. Trump go too far in invoking your wife? He did. He did. Um, you're proud of your family, just as I am. Correct. To subject my wife into the middle of a raucous political conversation was completely inappropriate. And I hope you apologize for that, Donald. Well, I have to tell you, I hear phenomenal things. I hear your wife is a lovely woman. She is. I she's don't fantastic. know her. And this she is, is a total absolutely the love of my life. And she's right here. And why don't Good. you apologize Good. for her? No, I won't right do that now. because I said nothing yeah. wrong. But I do hear so she's a lovely woman. So here's the deal. My wife is a Mex Mexican-American. She's an American by choice. She loves this country as much as anybody in this room. And she wants a secure border, but she wants to embrace the traditional American values that make us special and make us unique. We're at a crossroads right now. Are we going to take the Reagan approach, the hopeful, optimistic approach, the approach that says that you come to our country legally, you pursue your dreams with a vengeance, you create opportunities for all of us, or the Donald Trump approach? The approach that Dana. says that everything is bad, that everything is coming to an end. I, Mr. Trump, I'm Jeb on the Reagan side of this. That they come into our country as an act of love. With all of the problems that we have in so many instances, we have wonderful people coming in. But with all of the problems, this is not an act of love. He's weak on immigration, by the way, in favor of Common Core, which is also a disaster. <laughs> but weak on immigration, he doesn't get my vote. 
Dana, with Mr. Trump, Mr. Trump, Trump. Call, immigration did not come up in 2016 because Mr. Trump brought it up. We talked about it in 2012. We talked about it in 2008. We talked about it in Not 2004. I, I, we have like, been talking about it for 25 years. This is why Fiorina, people are tired Fiorina, of politicians. We're going, to come to you. we're going to come to you. I just want to get Governor Bush a, a chance to respond to what Mr. Trump Look, said. Look, first of all, I wrote a book about this uh, three, four years ago now. And I laid out a comprehensive conservative approach for immigration reform. And it does require securing the border. No one disagrees with that. But to build a wall and to deport people half a million a month would cost hundreds of billions of dollars, Donald. Hundreds of billions of dollars. It would destroy community life. It would tear families apart. And it would send a signal to the rest of the world that the United Mr. States Trump, values that are so this. important for our long-term success no longer matter in this country. As I said, we are spending $200 billion. We are spending $200 billion a year on maintaining what we have. We will move them out. The great ones will come back. The good ones will come back. They'll be expedited. Mr. They'll Trump. be back. They'll come back legally. We'll have a country. They'll come back legally. Okay, on that note, you have criticized Governor Bush for speaking Spanish on the campaign trail. You said, quote, he should really set an example by speaking English in the United States. What's wrong with speaking well, Spanish? Well, I think it's wonderful and all, but I did it a little bit half-heartedly, but I do mean it to a large extent. We have a country where, to assimilate, you have to speak English. And I think that where he was and the way it came out didn't sound right to me. We have to have assimilation. To have a country, we have to have assimilation. I'm not the first one to say this, Dana. We've had many people over the years, for many, many years, saying the same thing. This is a country where we speak English, not Spanish. Well, I'm, I've been speaking English here tonight, and I'll keep speaking English, but the simple fact is, if a, college, if a high school kid asked me a question in Spanish, a, a, a school, by the way, a voucher program that was created under my watch, the largest voucher program in the country, where kids can go to a Christian school, and they ask me a question in Spanish, I'm going to show respect and answer that question in Spanish, Dana. even though they do speak English, and even though they embrace American values. This was a reporter, not a high school kid, by the way. Dana, I, I, I agree that English is the unifying language of our country, and everyone should learn to speak it. It's important. I want to tell you a story about someone that didn't speak English that well. It was my grandfather. He came to this country in the 1960s as uh, escaping Cuba, and he lived with us growing up. And my grandfather loved America. He understood what was so special about this country, he loved Ronald Reagan. He would be very proud of the fact that we're here this evening. My grandfather instilled in me the belief that I was blessed to live in the one society in all of human history where even I, the son of a bartender and a maid, could aspire to have anything and be anything that I was willing to work hard to achieve. But he taught me that in Spanish because it was the language he was most comfortable in. And he became a conservative even though he got his news in Spanish. And so I do give interviews in Spanish, and here's why. Because I believe that free enterprise and limited government is the best way to help people who are, trying to, who are trying to achieve upward mobility. And if they get their news in Spanish, I want them to hear that directly from me, not from a translator at Univision. Thank you, Senator Rubio. <laughs> Senator Cruz. <laughs> Senator Cruz, this week we learned more about Dr. Carson's plan for the 11 to 12 million undocumented immigrants in this country. Dr. Carson proposed giving these undocumented immigrants a six-month grace period to pay back taxes, then to let them become guest workers, and only to deport people who fail to do that. Not exactly Under what your, I said. Well, how would you say it, sir? I was just reading the Wall Street Journal quote, but please tell us. Well, what I said, after we seal the borders, after we turn off the spigot that dispenses all the goodies so we don't have people coming in here, including employment, that people who had a pristine record, we should consider allowing them to become guest workers primarily in the agricultural sphere, because that's the place where Americans don't seem to want to work. That's what I said. And they have a six-month period to do that. If they don't do it within that time period, then they become illegal. And as illegals, they will be treated as such. Okay, from the horse's mouth. Senator Cruz, does that fit your definition of amnesty? Well, Jake, you know, I'm, I'm very glad that Donald Trump's being in this race has forced the mainstream media finally to talk about illegal immigration. I think that's very important. I like and respect Ben Carson. I'll let him talk about his own plans. 
But I will say this, the natural next question that primary voters are asking after we focus on illegal immigration is, okay, what are the records of the various candidates? And this is an issue on which there are stark differences. A majority of the men and women on this stage have previously and publicly embraced amnesty. I am the only candidate on this stage who has never supported amnesty and, in fact, who helped lead the fight to stop a massive amnesty plan in 2013 when Barack Obama and Harry Reid joined the Washington Republicans in a massive amnesty plan. I stood shoulder to shoulder with Jeff Sessions helping lead the fight. You know, folks here have talked about how do you secure the borders. Well, I've been leading the fight in the Senate to triple the border patrol, to put in place fencings and walls, to put in place a strong biometric exit entry Thank system. you, Senator. Senator Rubio, uh, can I, can I'm not I, sure exactly. We'll, we'll come back to you in one second, sir. No. But Senator Rubio, I'm not sure exactly whose plan he's, he, he's saying is, is constitutes amnesty, but I know no. he has said it about your plan in the past, so I want to give you a chance to respond. Then Dr. Carson will come to you. Okay. Well, let me say that uh, legal immigration is not an issue I read about in the newspaper. Immigration, illegal immigration, all the good aspects of immigration, and all the negative ones as well, I live with. My family's immigrants. My neighbors are all immigrants. My in-laws are all immigrants. So I've seen every aspect of it. And I can tell you America doesn't have one immigration problem. It has three. First, despite the fact that we are the most generous country in the history of the world on allowing people to come here legally, we have people still coming illegally. Second, we have a legal immigration system that no longer works. It primarily is built on the basis of whether or not you have a relative living here instead of merit. And third, we have 11 or 12 million people, many of whom have been here for longer than a decade, who are already here illegally. And we must deal with all three of these problems. We cannot deal with all the three of these problems in one massive piece of legislation. I learned that. We tried it that way. Here's the way forward. First, we must. We must secure our border, the physical border with, or the wall, absolutely. But we also need to have an entry-exit tracking system. Forty percent of the people who come here illegally come illegally, and then they overstay the visa. We also need a mandatory E-Verify system. After we've done that, step two would be to modernize our legal immigration system. So you come to America on the basis of what you can contribute economically, not whether or not simply you have a relative living here. And after we've done those two things, I believe the American people you, will be sir. very reasonable and responsible about what you do with someone who's been here and isn't a criminal. If you're a criminal, obviously you will not be able to stay. Thank you, Senator. Senator uh, Dr. Carson, I want to give you 30 seconds. I'd like you to answer the question. Senator Cruz describes plans such as yours as amnesty. Why is your plan not amnesty? My plan is not amnesty for a number of reasons. Number one, you know, I've talked to farmers, and they said they cannot hire Americans to do the kind of job that I'm talking about. And uh, the second reason is because the individuals who register as guest workers, they don't get the vote, they are not American citizens, and they don't get the rights and privileges of American citizens. So that's key. But the other thing that I want to bring up is I mentioned something earlier. I think it was just sort of glossed over. I talked about the success in Yuma County. I mean, incredible success. And the Department of Justice said, no, we don't want to do that. That's too successful. We don't have to keep reinventing the wheel. All we have to do is look at things that work. All we have to do is use a little Thank common you, sense. Thank you, Dr. Carson. I want to talk about the issue of birthright citizenship, which, is, which has emerged since the first debate as, as in a, a major issue uh, in this campaign. Mr. Trump, you say that babies born in the United States to undocumented immigrants should not any longer get automatic American citizenship. Ms. Fiorina says that you are pandering on this issue and acting like the politicians that you rail against. What's your message to Ms. Fiorina on birthright citizenship? Well, first of all, the, the 14th Amendment says very, very clearly to a lot of great legal scholars, not television scholars, but legal scholars, that it is wrong. It can be corrected with an act of Congress, probably doesn't even need that. A woman gets pregnant. She's nine months. She walks across the border. She has the baby in the United States, and we take care of the baby for 85 years. I don't think so. And by the way, Mexico and almost every other country anywhere in the world doesn't have that. We're the only ones dumb enough, stupid enough to have it. And people, and by the way, this is not just with respect to Mexico. They're coming from Asia to have babies here, and all of a sudden we have to take care of the babies for the life of the baby. The 14th Amendment, it reads properly, 
you can go, and it's probably going to be have to check, go through a process of court, probably ends up at the Supreme Court. But there are a lot of great legal scholars that say that is not correct. And in my opinion, it makes absolutely no. We're the only country, one of the only countries.